According to a recent poll, more than half of Windows 8 users prefer Windows 7, uh, mostly because of fear of price and compatib compatibility issues. Mm -hmm. it, do you feel that's because of fear tactics? Uh, yeah, I think that that has to play a part. And, and I, I was talking about this with someone else this morning. This this happens every time a new Windows comes out, and, and rightfully so to a certain extent. I mean, Windows is the most popular operating system on the planet. and change is scary. I mean, just on a human level, change is scary. So uh, if you look back to like Windows 95, there were fears about the command line being uh, completely made uh, obsolete and not being available. And so much of technicians' uh, expertise was built on being able to zip around in a command line and fix a computer quickly. Uh, Windows uh, XP and uh, Vista had similar kind of uh, DRM-ish like anti-piracy uh, uh, features that were supposedly built into the operating system that well-known pundits were spreading around as uh, as if this was going to be the death knell for open platform computing. So price being one of the major fears, it, do you feel the price point for the Windows 8 is fair or overpriced? It, it, it's Everything's going to boil out to what the market can bear. The upgrade price for existing Windows 7 users, licensed Windows 7 users, is 20 bucks for the upgrade to Windows 8. I, I don't know anybody that has a computer which that can't afford that upgrade price. Uh, and then uh, beyond that, I mean, th there's, there's always going to be like these outlandish enterprise per seat prices and then, you know, the, the low priced student uh, license that's, you know, 50 bucks or 60 bucks or something like that. So it, 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 there, there should not be a legitimate fear that prices will be an issue for Windows 8. I think everything will kind of come out in the wash. So you mentioned, you know, change being sort of a, a fear factor for many of the users. What are some of the features that you feel users will welcome or some of the features that users are going to be hesitant to accept? So here's where I think um, Windows 8 is really going to shine. And this, is, this comes from having uh, just come back from the Intel Developer Forum a few weeks ago. Uh, and Intel Developer Forum, as John said yesterday on, our, on the program, uh, is, is a, kind of a a bellwether for what's two years out in the in the PC business. Uh, they they show technology there earlier than any other tech show there is because they're so far ahead with the Moore's Law and whatnot. Uh, and the striking thing that I noticed there at IDF was the fact that there were no PCs on display that didn't have touchscreens. Uh, if you looked at a laptop, it was a laptop that turned into a tablet and had a touchscreen. Or if you looked at a desktop machine, it was a desktop machine that had a touchscreen interface um, as the primary driver uh, for interaction uh, as opposed to a mouse. Still had a keyboard, but it was a touchscreen. So when Metro UI is engineered to be a tablet or living room uh, operating system first and then a desktop second, but the, the desktop and laptop business is recognizing the fact that this is where we're going, so let's let's shift the paradigm a little bit on how we want our users to access our computers. So Microsoft claiming that Windows 8 is going to be the first version of Windows to be designed for both tablets and desktops is to make, you know, basically it easier for users to switch between interfaces. Is that something users are excited about or something that can also cause more headaches for users? So there was a, there was a piece in the register today um, and uh, I, I from an unnamed uh, Intel source, and uh, there was a, there's been some rumblings in kind of the uh, the IDG IDC info world type publication saying, look, you know, uh, this is not uh, this is not something consumers are excited about, but it's also it's also also something that you really have to uh, you have to try it out to understand why this is a at least a comfortable, if not better, user experience. Much like what people said about the iPad, you know, I mean, I, I, I was one of those people that listened to all of my Apple nut friends talking about, okay, Mark, you just don't understand what makes the iPad so special. If you had one in your hand, you'd you get it, right? And, and I'm, I'm on the, the shoe's on the other foot now. I've had a chance to play with desktop and laptop machines that uh, use Metro UI well. And I understand how it is a, a comfortable computing experience in ways that, you know, the general public doesn't understand yet because they haven't seen it, they haven't been exposed to it. So whether or not the, 
the public will take to it. I mean, I think it's a roll of the dice that Microsoft's willing to gamble with. Well, Mark, we appreciate you joining us today, and we'll talk to you soon. Thank you. Keep up to date with the latest in tech innovation by joining us daily at News Desk on SiliconANGLE TV.